So here we are about to treat a posterior polar cataract. These types of cataracts are characterized by a dense posterior capsular plaque that is often associated with a weakness in the posterior capsule in the visual axis. Many published reports show that there is a 1 in 3 chance of this patient having a posterior capsule rupture during cataract surgery. If the posterior capsule ruptures during surgery, then the patient may need to have a vitrectomy and subsequent surgery to remove the cataract and place the desired lens implant. So what tricks will we use to safely navigate cataract surgery in the presence of a posterior polar cataract? We need to prevent and ideally avoid complications. We begin the surgery in the normal manner and create a five millimeter capsular axis using a bent needle cystitome. The first thing we need to do is differentiate the posterior polar cataract from a posterior subcapsular cataract. The posterior polar cataract has more depth and thickness than a posterior subcapsular cataract that tends to be flat and thin. And then number two, we need to perform hydrodelineation instead of hydrodissection. Hydrodelineation, where we get this nice golden ring, creates a fluid plane bet between the nucleus and epinucleus. We want to avoid any sudden force between the cortex and posterior capsule. And then number three, we want to remove the nucleus first. Remove the epinucleus second. Remove the cortex third. And then finally, remove the cortex involving the posterior polar plaque last. So we remove these cataracts very gently from the inside out. The most fragile portion of this patient's eye is the area where the posterior polar cataract resides because usually there is an associated weakness in the posterior capsule just behind the posterior polar cataract itself. In this patient, we've been able to successfully and safely remove the entire cataract, inclu including the posterior polar plaque. Then we polish the peripheral posterior capsule and the posterior surface of the anterior capsule. We make sure to not polish the posterior capsule in the area where the posterior polar cataract plaque was. It is weak and is far more fragile than the normal posterior capsule of a normal eye. And when we insert the eye well gently, we do it slowly to avoid trauma to the posterior capsule where the posterior polar cataract was. And then when we remove viscoelastic from behind the eye well, we go slow or gentle and we make sure not to apply unnecessary pressure to the posterior capsule in the visual axis. The enemy of good is perfection. So at the end of the case, we have a beautifully placed monofocal lens implant. Our go-to monofocal, the Bausch & Lohm LI61AO, inside the capsular bag with an intact capsule. This patient did well and had a safe and uncomplicated surgery to remove the posterior polar cataract. I hope this video was helpful. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.